I already introduced myself before, but again, I'm Mike Kevin RG. Uh, I'm the chairman and the commissioner of the Cook County Board of Review. This is Jim Thompson, who's with me, deputy commissioner at the Board of Review. Roland Lara, who's one of our hearing officers and analysts, want to join us here tonight. He's waving back there for those of you on camera. Uh, Jim was the project manager for the DAP system, the digital appeals processing system that I'm very proud of that we built in 15 months at the board with the Bureau of Technology's help from Cook County. Uh, it's my understanding it's the largest tech project that's happened in the past five years in the county. Um, Really, when we talked about it, um, we'll talk about what it does and what we wanted it to do. Um, Jim will, will speak more to, the, to uh, the, the software and the program development of it. Uh, I'm going to talk really as kind of the client, the commissioner and the chairman, as to what we wanted it to do. We really started with the purpose uh, of core values of transparency and openness. Um, We'll talk in a second here about what the Board of Review does, but we deal with property taxes. And I would say for most people, they think it's set by a magic eight ball that if you shake really hard, eventually your number comes up. Um, that's not how it works uh, at all. It's an evidence-based system uh, based on a state statute. But the core value is building or rebuilding public trust. Um, and we knew that if we moved to an online portal system where the public could file their complaints online and on the back office, the project management would work with the analysts passing the file between themselves and having their evidence and their conclusions on a system where the homeowner or the, or the business owner or the taxpayer could look at it later, it would, it would push what we're doing out of the shadows and into the light. So just as a background of the board, as I mentioned, um, there's three commissioners at the Board of Review. Um, we have 126 employees. We have approximately a $9 million budget. Um, the volume that we've seen at uh, the board is astronomical. Um, we have three commissioners. Basically, think of us as a three-judge panel. Um, the process really starts with the assessor's office. The assessor puts a value on a piece of property, a home, a business, this building that we're in. That property owner feels it's over-assessed. The assessor didn't get it right. They file at the Board of Review, and it's a three-judge panel, myself and two colleagues of mine. Every file is reviewed by all three. So we have what we call a first, a second, and a third cut. So it'll go to the first uh, commissioner staff, that hearing officer and analyst will look at the evidence that's been submitted, perhaps conduct a hearing uh, if the appellant asks for a hearing, review the evidence, make a conclusion, show their evidence uh, or the, the wor their work of how they came to their conclusion in the file, and then it'll go to the second commissioner's staff, the third commissioner's staff, and then finally, if two of the three commissioners agree that the, that, that value needs to drop, it gets reduced. We're completely separate from the assessor's office. We really, I, I used to be a federal prosecutor before I had this job, so I always explain we're the court of appeals, we're not the, the trial court. Um, so that's really our responsibility, to hear and rule on a property owner's assessment appeals. We have an extraordinary volume of filing. So as we'll talk about in a second, um, what started out as a desire to make the system better, we realized was a, a digital system that we needed out of necessity. Um, we heard 476,000 appeals last year. And as I mentioned, that's 1.4 million reviews because by statute, each of the commissioners has to review it. So it gets reviewed three times. Um, ten, uh, 15 years ago, in approximately 2002, uh, there were 42,000 appeals. Last year, it was 476,000. We had, in 2002, long before I got there, they had approximately 124 employees, about a $9 million budget. Now the budget's the same, the headcount's the same, but the volume has gone up tenfold. Um, we knew we had to do this for the right reasons of transparency and opening up government, but we also need to, needed that we needed to work a tech system so that people who pushed carts and worked with paper files uh, got eliminated and we converted those jobs into analyst jobs. So, one of the things Jim said we should bring is a wonderful physical prop, because who doesn't love props? So this is a file that we used to have. See? It's paper. Oh, yeah. If you like it, we got a whole warehouse full of them. They're awesome. Um, it starts, so you would file a complaint. See if I can even get the complaint that's in here. You'd file a paper complaint, which, by the way, was in triplicate. Um, and you'd file a complaint. It would come in, we'd have a data entry person who would type your information in the system. Another person's job was to print labels. See, labels. And then it would go onto a file jacket, and then all the evidence that would get submitted by the property owner would be copied and put in here, or all the evidence that the hearing officer and the analyst puts together. So imagine that times 476,000 times five. Um, and physically, we were running out of space in the building, uh, plus we're having to have more warehouse space. Um, and we realized, like I said, we, we needed to eliminate the paper. And as we see here, this is the appeal form. Um, 
I should say right now, I'm very proud of our DAP system, our digital appeals processing system, but one of the things we realized when we we're building it early on is not everybody in Cook County who wants to use our services has access to or is comfortable doing it online. They still, some folks, uh, seniors, people who, for whom English isn't their first language, people who don't have ready access to technology, they're going to want a paper complaint form. So we still have the paper complaint form. We just have far fewer of it. And we've been able to convert those people whose job it is to do the data entry, those jobs are now analyst jobs. So we'll always have this. Just it, We have to serve everybody. But this is the complaint form. Um, the decision results, as you can see uh, when they came out, this is the inside of the jacket, as we would call it, the inside of the folder, um, right here. Little folder right there. So you have three analysts. Okay, the first analyst would look at the file, would do all the analysis, would handwrite his or her notes, or handwrite his or her calculation, handwrite his or her basis for a conclusion, and it literally goes onto a metal cart and it goes down the hall to the next commissioner's office. And that staff takes it off the cart, works up the math, looks at the evidence, puts their numbers in, and then it goes on the cart back down the hall. So, you know, we talk about transparency in government and, and having access to open data. It has to be legible first. I mean, tr try, try filing a FOIA or asking to see the evidence on your file and trying to understand what any of these scrawls mean. And when this area up here is empty because they've only done their work here and the rest of the paper's in there, we knew a digital system would just obviously start with eliminating, trying to read handwriting and, and what have you. Um, the files from the analysts always have more data than this, but this is really their number crunching in there. Uh, if you're um, an appraiser or an attorney or a real estate professional in that field, you, you might understand what it means, but if you're a common citizen, you don't. Um, so again, by putting it online and having some common legends and, and ways of, of understanding what those mean, uh, we're able to kind of move forward. So one of the benefits that we had to do with our vendor, we use, we're using the OnBase platform. Uh, DataBank is, is the vendor that uh, we did a procurement with with the Cook County Board of uh, Technology, I'm sorry, Bureau of Technology, and we went with uh, DataBank. Um, the OnBase platform had a lot of what we wanted right out of the box, but we knew we needed to rework it to make it work for the board. Um, the, board of, the Cook County Board of Review is the largest property tax appeal forum in the world. We're the largest one in this country and certainly the largest one in the world, bigger than New York, Los Angeles, Atlanta. Um, we just hear more volume of appeals. Uh, part of that's we've got, Cook, we've got Chicago and the county at large. But the process of going through building DAPs was great because we had to rethink our processes. And, um, and, the, and the software drove us to that, but also the folks who were helping us rebuild it at DataBank really made us think how, how a file gets touched, how a file gets worked. Again, with three offices, there's going to be some duplication. That's in the state statute. We have to do that to do the file the right way. But how many times is it not being touched by an analyst, the person who's really doing the work? How many people's job it is, is it to take a staple out, to take a rubber band out, to take a binder clip out, to put a third label it, as we realized at one point? So well, let's show them that. Yeah, so the old Board of Review, we have, this is one of Jim's favorites. I think it's just because there's so many weird posters in our storage room. Um, but <laughs> stacks and stacks of files, a typical analyst office over here, carts everywhere, files everywhere. Um, this is the elevator bank outside the board. So um, I won't bore you with it. I will bore you for like 30 seconds. So uh, just because it's kind of interesting uh, if, if you're wonky about this stuff. So um, because Cook County is so large, we do a triennial assessment. So a piece of property is reassessed once every three years. In that three-year period, that property owner can still appeal it. So, for example, last year was the city triennial reassessment. The assessor went through and put values on the properties in the city. Everybody in the city could appeal last year. They could also come and appeal this year. They can appeal in the third year of the try. So the reason I, um, and about 50% of the property in Cook County is in the city of Chicago. Approximately another 25% is in the northern suburbs and a little less than 25% are in the southern suburbs. So this overflow, I can just tell, is from the city triennial because we're just, it's an onslaught of people in the first year when they got that first bill with their new assessment on it uh, um, said, I have to go and, and try and get this reduced and get some relief. Um, and again, there's no security guard. We talk about password protection. There's no sheriff's deputy here. 
Like, I mean, we, I mean, we would always have to have a sheriff's deputy there from nine to five, but after a while, uh, after hours, we just didn't even have uh, proper safeguards for the paper files. This is our hearing room, which when we were finished with hearings, uh, usually we wrap up uh, toward December, maybe the first week of January, we've moved from having hearings to having all the evidence in house, and now the analysts have all the written evidence, they've taken all, all the oral uh, evidence at, at oral hearings. So they've got all of that paper. So we've been able to kind of, uh, not kind of, been able to get rid of all this and just go back to our core competencies of being professional analysts, looking at evidence, asking for evidence, knowing how to engage with the taxpayer and collecting that information and coming to a conclusion. Ooh, more carts. Um, if anybody here is in the cart business, please feel free to come and take our carts. Um, so again, as I mentioned, why, why did, what are some of the reasons that we had to do this? Um, the volume appeal was rising. I mean, we just, what, what became a good government became a practical government reason for doing it. We had to do it. Um, county's goals to get the tax bills out on time. If any of you have heard or interacted with the Board of Review before tonight, I'd be surprised. It's a, we're a small agency. We have a huge impact, though. Um, we are the last stop before the bills go out. So schools, libraries, police, fire, all public services go through the Board of Review because we're the ones that help the revenue stream get to those taxing districts. If we take too long to do our analysis, so if there's a hiccup in it, because as you can see, maybe one of those carts gets lost and we can't finalize our numbers and our figures, then the bills go out late. And if the bills go out late, those local taxing districts have to go into debt and take a loan out. So for example, if we're a month late, the Chicago Public Schools doesn't have the revenue because our assessment was late, the bills will go out late, the bills are paid late, CPS gets the money late, and because of that, CPS is saying, well, we need it in hand by September 1 so that we've got money to pay teachers and for payroll, but if they don't, they have to go to banks, take out interest, what they call a tax anticipation ward, and pay interest on that because, again, we didn't get the job done right. So we knew we had to get the bills, right on, uh, uh, bills out on time, which means we had to save tax dollars in doing so. Um, I didn't know performance metrics. Um, I, you know, literally going down a hall and looking at carts. Okay, this time of the year there should be 18 carts. Now there's 17. Great job. Hey, there's 18 carts. Now there's 20. Bad job. That is in no way, shape, or form the way to, to manage an office. Um, it's also not good in real time, you know, to, to know which individual analysts are doing better work, which ones can be promoted and take on a greater challenge, which ones need to be maybe retrained and given some support. And constituents expect better services. Um, you know, as you'll see in a second, we show you the opening screen. We, this is not um, earth-breaking uh, what we're doing at, at, at the Board of Review. Um, folks have, are expecting it. Um, and again, we had spent too many hours on clerical administrative tasks and not on the analysis. Um, and then we couldn't meet our core goals, uh, which is to get uh, a complete full and fair analysis on every appeal done in a timely, timely fashion. Uh, again, getting in the weeds, and Jim might want to jump in on this too, uh, we're using a, an ECM that's on base uh, to streamline and digitize our process. Uh, it interacts with the county mainframe, which is on its own getting updated and revamped. Um, so we've had a portal for about two years, a public facing portal to do the intake of complaints. So you say, I would like to file my appeal. We have the paper form, but for the past two years, we've also had a, a digital uh, uh, intake system online at our website. Up until the system, all that did was take it in and then we literally printed it out, created labels, folders, put it on the cart. So this was our public facing intake was an interim step until we could get this built. And as you'll see in a minute, it's, it's a, a pretty stable and, and uh, successful back office workflow for, for our analysts. So just on the timeline, we, start, we issued the RFP in, in 2013, if you can all see it. We selected data bank in 2014. Um, and then once we started up, there was really no safety net because as I said, you know, we, we were all in on this. We didn't in the first year have paper files and electronic filing. When we flipped the switch, it was all electronic. And if this didn't work as well as we thought or didn't work at all, the bills would go out late and the county would have egg on its face for not being able to move to a digital platform. So we implemented DAPS beginning in July of 2015. Um, again, getting into the wonky nerdiness that is the Cook County Property Assessment uh, System. Um, we open at the Board of Review in July. Uh, begin, we begin opening townships up, uh, and, and your neighborhood is really in a township. 
Jefferson Township, Lake Township, North Township. Um, these are the townships that your, your neighborhood is in the city or if you're in the suburbs, Evanston Township, Oak Park Township. Um, we work on the township map. We start opening those up in July. We have to get everything done by the middle of April because again, we finish our work in the middle of April. We balance to make sure that every appeal that came in, every complaint number has been identified and had a value put on it. We balance that out as we call it. Then we go to the treasurer's office. We give the treasurer's office all of our values for every single property in Cook County. The treasurer's office matches that with all the tax rates. The bills get generated physically and they get mailed out first week of July for a first week in August pay date. And then once all the money is received in the first week in August, electronic payments are made back to those 3,000 plus taxing districts in Cook County. Okay, it's a tight time frame. All of the offices, the assessor, the board of review, the treasurer, the clerk, we all work together. We have a uniform calendar to make sure where everybody is. It's collaborative, but a little bit competitive because we know that if anybody takes too long on one end, they've got to gobble the time back from somebody else. So again, back to the calendar, implementation began in July of 2015 and we closed on time in April 2016 with the system. Uh, we used an agile methodology. We had six sprints um, in our scrum that we did. Um, we would have liked to have budgeted for more, but we've already started working on phase two. So some of the things that we wanted to do in a seventh or eighth sprint have been rolled into our phase two development. Um, we dissected and re-engineered every aspect of what we did. As you saw from that workflow, um, we really tore it apart and it started with our users. It started with Roland and the other analysts at the board. On the front facing, we did some uh, public conversations with members of the public and the practicing bar who would use it to say, what do you think it needs to do? But internally, with a workflow, we wanted our analysts to tell us, what should your screen look like? What are the features it should have built in? Uh, what calculators do you want uh, built in? Uh, how do you want it to, what's the, what's the easiest and the fastest way to move data from one screen to the other? We don't want you retyping everything every screen. Um, and then we did uh, uh, the re-engineering of, of a user acceptance test. Um, every, every employee participated in the change. We did a number of, of conversations with them so that when it went live. And I'll just give you an example that's not up here. Even as the commissioner, I was realizing that um, I had to rethink what I, how I wanted it to work. So I'll give you one example. So um, there's two classes of property in Cook County. There's residences, homes, and commercial. Um, our commercial analysts, there's a lot more no file. This file right here is typical of what we'd see for a commercial. This is actually a condo building, um, but this and about three of these would be a commercial building because there's multiple tenants, there's multiple leases, there's multiple expenses, there's multiple deferred maintenance, there's a history of the building. There's a lot that we have to take in to, to getting the value correct. Um, I thought my, my, hear, my, my commercial hearing officer said, hey, you know what would be useful is the night before we have our hearings, can we get put in our queue in DAPS all of the files we're going to see tomorrow? So we can stay late the night before and review them all. And that way when the homeowner or the property owner or their attorney steps forward, we're ready. And I said, you know what, I don't want anybody to prejudge the file. I think it's best if you don't do that, if it's just a fresh, clean look and you hear what they have to say. I could not have been more wrong. Everything moved to a grinding halt. The attorney would step up or the property owner would step up and our analysts are opening up the file, trying to see what the evidence is, trying to read things while this person stands there. So again, we had to understand what our workflow was gonna be. And luckily, Databank um, was able to work with us and OnBase is agile enough uh, and durable enough that we're able to make some changes uh, while we were using it. Oh yeah, this is our happy new picture. It used to be cards. So this is a hearing, it's a typical hearing. This is a, probably a residential hearing, maybe a commercial hearing. Um, folks up here are the hearing officers. As you can see, two screens, no paper, no carts. People come in without paper, they leave without paper. Um, they, they can, we can turn the screens around and show folks what we're putting into the file, what we see. Uh, we can work them through it all. Um, hearings, just so you know, used to take four hours, five hours of you waiting there because we physically had to get your file in storage, put it on a cart, bring it up from the basement. It was a nightmare. Uh, now you walk in, we just bring it up, and you're out the door in about 30 minutes, 20 minutes. The portal, this is the public-facing side. So again, this is what you as a, as a, a appellant would fill out. If you've, you know, if you've got a Netflix or an Amazon account, it looks familiar. User ID, password, pretty straightforward. Um, you can file as a guest. 
Um, but one of the benefits of the system is that once you create an account, you can go back and look at every year you filed and go back and look at all the evidence. So I'll use the condo example. Let's say you bought a condo this year. You got an appraisal when you bought it. The appraiser said your condo is appraised at 200000 um, You file with us. Next year, the assessor raises it up to two fifty. You say, you know, I want to go back to my last year's filing at the Board of Review and pull up the PDF that I had of my appraisal when I bought it that said it was only worth 200000 And you want to take that. If you've got an account with us, you can move that evidence around from year to year. Um, and then again, just a screenshot, uploading it, uploading documents. Went back and forth. We title a document so you don't, uh, so that we, we can be used and, and standardized. Um, this is what the workflow looks in the back office for our analysts. Um, Evidence over here, chronology and workflow on the left. Jim, you want to talk about the workflow a little bit? That's one yeah. of the things that's. Who's familiar with OnBase? Is, is anyone familiar with? Has anyone used it before? Yeah, you are. You, <laughs> and that's just because of us. That's yeah. No, um, it, it, OnBase is re, is really simple, and and as I say, it's it's a workflow process. It's an ECM. It's it's based on two very simple things. One on this side, they call them life cycles. We just call them workflow. Okay, kind of where is this file going? Where, where does that, and what rights do you have when a file is in a certain queue? The other part to this is, uh, is keywords. Kind of all of these documents, which are just the, the paper file, are set over here. So everything is based on, off of rights, off of, off of where a document is in workflow, what action is taken on that to move it along workflow, and then you, you know, what, what you can see within each one of those files. So for something that we were doing where we're looking, where we're reviewing documents, where we're then adding something to the file and then moving along, uh, th this was the perfect platform for us from just the, just the out of the box. And then we, we configured it a little bit. But, uh, but it, it, all, of the, all of this data was then, was then auto-filled through, uh, through the mainframe and through the COBOL system. It, it pulled, did a nightly job and just kind of pulled everything every night. That's our phase two is to stop that. <laughs> um, but so we had, and, and that really kind of was uh, at times uh, um, uh, one of the largest hurdles that we had was because we were trying to uh, interact with a very old technology with a very new technology, which is always, I think you guys know, is, is one of the biggest challenges that we, we all have. Um, but uh, but it, as you can see, it, it, it really, it, it, it provided the information that we needed in the middle. It provided access to everything that, that an analyst needed to make a decision. But we'll, we'll go to the next one to show you kind of how. Uh, le, le, the, these are the results. So you go back to the page where people were drawing and, and, and kind of writing on. Now when, when you pull this up, when, when we get a FOIA result, when, they, when, they, when that comes in, you can read who did it. What, what, what the number was, what the, why they did it. But then also what some of the analysts did was they expanded on it. They didn't like the, the fact that they were limited by these boxes. So the analysts decided to use OneNote. And they applied OneNote and, and, they, and they copied it into their files. So now, go back to, here, open yep. the, go back to this. So what we did yeah. too was, while we were building it, we realized we had four years of what we call priors, the prior year files. So while it was being built, we took all these folks who used to be the back office folks pushing carts and doing other things um, and said, listen, you're going to be imaging four years worth of just the decision page. So this is what you see right here, the decision page. The math, the numbers, the signatures from the commissioner saying I sign off on that, that's my value. So Jim's point is, our folks said, listen, let's image it, put it into OneNote, and that way we can have prior year's notes in here so that if someone comes in, they can see their entire record on appeal here. Yeah, and, the, and, the ma and just, the, just the level of detail of what our analysts are not, again, again we, we were spending all our time pushing paper. We were literally spending all our time trying to manage an enormous paper system and very little time trying to analyze property, which was what we should have been doing, trying to anal analyze appeals. Now we have the time and the analysts can really sit down and they can write this out and, and really, really walk people down of how they arrived at the number, which is, which is really a fit. The other thing they can do, they can add pictures. <laughs> I mean, which is so simple and basic. This, this is pulled out of, this is pulled out of an appraisal report. report. 
So, so I mean, the, the, the level of detail that we're able to go into from each, from each property to property has really been, been amazing. And, and everything, to Jim's point, all of this was filed separately. So an appraiser will be hired for a large commercial building, <laughs> and it'll be a 50 or 100 page appraisal report. But maybe that analyst said, I only looked at a couple of pages, and I want to put make sure those notes make its way in their file. For that property owner later, they can get a complete record of how we came to our conclusions and, and, and how we came to our math. Okay, we're going to jump on a management tool. Oh my gosh, so this is great. So we were talking about management tools before. So um, this goes, this is the entry time, again, starting in July when we open and then ending up in April when we close. Um, and, and this is the life cycle of the file, how long we're spending and, and the volume that we're seeing. Um, again, it should have a little bit of a bump because again, we're doing intake, we're having hearings, hearings are over, so meaning that no more townships are open. There's no more deadlines to file anything. We've had all the hearings. Everything is in-house. Now we should be working on getting the files done. When we saw this report, we said, what is this? What is all this? We didn't realize we were spending an inordinate amount of time on duplicate filings. So if you have a condo and you file on your condominium and then you don't know it, but your building hires an attorney, that's a duplicate filing, okay? So we have to figure out which was filed last and which the homeowner wants to be a part of, but that's two files. So we're taking an enormous amount of time killing dupes. Maybe an attorney uh, is gets, maybe you hire an attorney for your, for your warehouse and um, to appeal the warehouse, but then a month later, you decide to let that attorney go and hire somebody else. So we have one complaint in the file from the first attorney and the, that first attorney, or that second attorney go ahead, goes ahead and files. We have two files on the same uh, property. We're spending all of this time. So, we didn't even realize this much time was getting wasted on, on basic administrative tasks until we started running these reports. And just, and just to, to, to note, we, were, we started to enter into a phase two, and we had to make decisions on where to spend money and, and really where to put it because we had a limited amount of capital. And this was, this was very effective. We all had anecdotal stories of what people did and why and, and what we needed to work on. But this really kind of drove it home that if we eliminated over 50% of one task, automated it, we, 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 we would make the system instantly better. We also need to show you, to remind you, that was our old management tool. So it really is quite a juxtaposition between the two. All right. So uh, we were on time and on budget. As I mentioned, you know, we were working without a state. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm legally obligated by President Preckwinkle to say we were on time and on budget <laughs> at every single time. Uh, but we are really proud of the on time uh, part. Um, again, once we, once we knew we were going to be doing this in a, in a live time, real time environment and not testing it, um, boy, everybody uh, minded their P's and Q's and everybody worked really hard to get it done. The, the practicing bar who appears before us really was hoping we wouldn't do it with the city. We would do it with one of the smaller uh, uh, suburban, the north or the south, but we, we had to do it as soon as possible. Uh, we completed it, we used it in the 2015 appeal session. It's online now. Um, as Jim mentioned, we're doing in phase two uh, some further development. Um, highest volume, tax bills went out on time. Um, Boy, eliminated over 2 million pieces of paper and reduced our space storage needs. So when you saw that workflow chart, one of the things we started racking up was a side chart of how much paper was generated and pushed in every st single step of the way. Ooh, mood lighting, awesome. Uh, I'm not gonna deepen my voice. Uh, and uh, so again, the 2 million pieces of paper kind of uh, gets pushed out. Um, we're gonna be figuring out what the cash value is of the warehouse space we're giving back to the county. Again, that'll hopefully reduce the cost of this because now without needing to store all that, they can, uh, they can turn that back over. Uh, and then as Jim mentioned before, we focus on our core competencies, getting away from pushing carts and rubber bands to making folks into analysts. Um, at the beginning of the process, we had a candid and direct conversation with everybody and said, at the end of this process, we're going to be focused on being analysts. So if your job was something other than being an analyst, you're going to have to learn how to be an analyst. And if you don't want to learn how to be an analyst, and if you don't have the skill set or the talents to be an analyst, um, you should know our job here is being analysts. Um, and there was real good, and there was great buy-in. Um, and again, you know, our goal, building trust through transparency, um, efficiency, and the accessibility of the file and the information in the file. Thanks. Any questions? That'd be questions. Um, the questions will use this. So yeah, any questions? 
So you talked a little bit about, uh, like, I, I guess, right at the end about managing sort of the human change and expectations of people working there. Right. I guess um, I've heard two things. One is that you can't just shut the doors of City Hall for a week. And I've heard that as, as a reason not to transition to a system like this. Um, and also that people are really fearful of n learning a new thing <laughs> yes. um, in this context. I guess, could you talk a little bit more about managing that human change? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, so um, we had... I think two people, maybe three people, who retired at the end of this. And they told us they didn't want to learn how to use the system. In the exit interview, I'm like, can you tell us you've been here for many years, you're doing a great job, I'm just, I'm eligible for retirement and I'd rather don't want to learn a system. Which really made us take a step back and go, okay, have we overwhelmed people, our own staff, with all these great things it can do? Now it just becomes overwhelming. So Jim and everyone started doing uh, kind of a reverse sprint of, okay, you came to us on the front end and told us what you wanted to do. Now we're pleased to tell you incrementally this is what it's going to be doing. And it's you're really doing the same job you did before. Um, we knew and we were candid with, with uh, uh, the county board and the Bureau of Technology. This was never a tool for us to reduce our headcount and reduce our budget. This was a, we like to keep our budget and keep our headcount rather than ballooning. So give you an example. Um, Last year, our overtime budget was approximately $400,000. This year, we're budgeting half that, about $200,000. Because, um, again, those folks who were not in a non-analyst non role are going to be in an analyst role, and we're not spending time finding where files are and where carts are. So the, the, the early retirement, not early retirement, they're eligible for retirement. The retirement side of it was um, pretty shocking and, and made us realize our kind of rollout internally maybe it was over the top. Maybe I was too excited with folks inside. And I'm just, let out. me just add just a little bit to that because uh, from a day-to-day -day viewpoint of, of going through it, using Agile allowed us to have, uh, through the discovery process, through stories and through, other, have everyone come in and kind of explain what they did. But not in, in a, and, and not like I moved a piece of paper here, I moved this data from here to there. That this is, this is, what, my, this is what I do here. They, under, they discovered they understood more about what the business process was, of why we did things. And then they allowed us to use that to really digitize their ideas and not their actual functions. Okay? So they became a part, they started building the system. And then they started testing the system. And then they started, and, and, and we had the vendor in that was giving us notes and back and forth. And thank God it was a milestone. Um, <laughs> contract, if it was time and, and materials, I think we'd still be there. But it, it, they, they spent a lot of time with us to not just replicate the paper process, but to really find out what you, everyone that worked with us had a special knowledge and skill. And we worked really hard to bring that out and make sure that they could pass that skill on to what the digital process was and continue doing that. So it was, it was a really, I, I think, the methodology and going through the change. We, we had this big plan for change management, but when we saw people, how excited they were to be a part of how we changed it, it, it almost took care of itself. It was really, really, it, it, we were lucky to have a vendor who was able to, to do that. And we were, as a staff, we were lucky to kind of recognize that we had really good people and to trust them. Uh, is it an important concern that the three commissioners' reviews are independent of each other, and is there anything in this system that uh, is related to that in the new Great system? Question. So the question was, is it important that all three commissioners' reviews are independent, and is there anything in the system to, to make sure those firewalls are there? They are important, um, and we want everybody to be independent but not isolated. So. If there is a question about a file, it's a lot easier now. So, for example, we have a, one of the things that we knew we'd have to bump in is a management tool so that if somebody felt like they had too many questions and they couldn't work it, that they could bump it up. So if, it's, if I'm the first cut and I'm sending it to somebody who's the second cut, um, one of my colleagues, and that analyst gets it and says, I feel like I'm kind of out of my weight class, they can manually bump it up to their boss so, or up to the commissioner to take a look at it. Um, so we wanted to be... Um, or they have the ability to go down the hall and talk and say, hey, I'm looking, especially on a third cut. Sometimes on a third cut, you'll have the first cut says one thing, the second cut says something else, and the third cut is saying, I think the two of you need to talk because we're basically going to have three different decisions here. If that's the case, if there's three different decisions, it's, it's a no change. The file stays at the value it was coming in because we couldn't get into agreement. Um, so it does allow it. The fact is, Jim said that we can take 
on, on one note, some of that, those notes, um, more and more the third cut is just saying, is referring back to the notes in the first and the second cut. They're not recreating it on the third time. So if the first and the second cut look identical, the third per the third cut is saying, I'm not gonna recopy everything here. See, here's my analysis, and for the supporting evidence, go look at first and second cut, because it's in there. I don't know if that answers it. Thanks. So I'm just curious how much of this information you're gonna make available for people. You know, you may not get as many appeals if people know what type of evidence you're using. And, you know, if I know that my condo building is in your file and this is what you're using, I may not even need to appeal. So, great question. Future. So, uh, it's, it's all open under the same rules we had before, which is folks have to submit a FOIA. Um, but with a FOIA, it's now taken in digitally and we send you back the file digitally. So, you email us a FOIA and say, I'd like to look at my building. Um, I'd like to look at all the condo units in my building. I'd like to know if my building appealed. We'll pull it up figure out the, give it, get the address, get the property index number, process it, and then send you back a data file of everything you need. So um, good question in terms of, I don't know what's gonna mean in terms of the volume of appeal going down. Um, if people could look at it, it might. I mean, the fact of the matter is everybody's paying more attention to property taxes and there's TV commercials and it's in the press and what have you. So, um, and there's no filing fee. And the fact that we make it easier, I think is gonna drive more people to do it, which we want them to do. I mean, that was, we don't wanna ever make it more difficult. Um, the, the strange thing about paper, paper complaints you realized was, you know, um, I didn't realize until we started working on this, you know, a, a paper complaint form that can reduce what you pay in taxes is valuable in itself. The, who gets one of those complaint forms? How, how many do we print? How do we distribute them? I mean, it, with the, the openness of having it online 24 hours a day that anybody can look at versus the, I have a complaint form and I decide you get one, but not she gets one. You get a complaint form, but they don't. Um, when you eliminate those paper complaint forms and it's all online, it's democratized for all. Yes, ma'am. Um, what was the process of um, finding a vendor like? Well, were there impediments in the old way of doing things? Uh, great question. I, um, we are not IT professionals at the Board of Review. Um, and we knew what we'd like it to do, but communicating that to our procurement officials and our, and our BOT. So we all had to get on the same page. I'll let Jim let me, talk. Yeah, let me I'll let talk Jim about talk that about one. that. Okay. Um, um, so we, we had two When our, it got too frustrating as the commissioner, yeah. that's when I stood up, I'm like, figure this out, Jim. Man. Yeah, just, we, we, had, we, had, we had two RFPs, yeah. okay. The first one we sent out was, hey, what should we do? And it was really, really, it, we got all kinds of answers back, but they were all the wrong answers. We, we did have several on-base platform, people that were using the on-base platform. Uh, and then the CIO at the time, she, she said, you know, you need to pick a software platform. You guys aren't technical people. Pick something, you know what your business is, and then pick an implementer that can translate your words, use that platform into what your business process should be. So when we reissued, we reissued it as implementers. Um, we got six, I think, back, which were, and they were all very good. Um, uh, our vendor was was fantastic um, in in the sense that they were with us every day, uh, and it, it was up until two weeks ago we had someone in our office from from their from their office. Um, they were with us every step of the way um, in just being able to understand not just what we do but what OnBase does and how to marry those two things together. Um, it went through, we, we went through kind of a blind review of six, we did an interview process, and then um, submitted, we, we had an RFP committee, uh, selected it, submitted it to the board, went through the board, the, the Cook County board, went through the board scrutiny. Well, I, I mean, and the other thing, we did have a part, of, BOT was with us the entire way as our technical kind of advisor. So they, they helped us with things that we didn't understand and, uh, and things that weren't, you know, property assessment appeal uh, centric. So, and, so and, you know, just adding one thing to what yeah. Jim was saying, what you brought up, which is, it made me remind, we had a change of CIOs in the county at this time. The new one who came in, one of the reasons we withdrew the old RFP and put the new one out is um, the county was learning how to communicate its needs to the vendor universe better. So we realized when we sent the first one out, we had missed all sorts of platforms to communicate the RFP. So there were people who 
might have been eligible and we would want them to give us a bid, they didn't even know about it. So that's something that the county is doing a better job at is just trying to find all the procurement platforms to put it out on to say Cook County, which is a we buy a lot of stuff, is buying something, and we would like as many people as possible to know about it. If it's too narrow of a portal, uh, we don't get a better product, a better price, and we're leaving a lot of people out of the process. One more question, maybe? Sure. If this involves us individually lowering your taxes, then we can't do that. <laughs> Somebody's like, hypothetically, I live at XYZ Street. Yes. So, so what's the appropriate rate of change for new technology in government where, like, you know, you're, you're doing some databasing, which is important, but there's also, like, technologies like blockchain, which are more experimental. And, like, so, what, so like, as, as someone who's trying to implement change, how do you make sure you don't overreach, but at the same time, how do you make sure you're at the right part of the wave where you're kind of, you know, not falling behind technology, but not risking too much on experimental uh, that's a great, great question. Um, we we realized, um, and Jim could talk about OnBase, you know, using a, a platform that was pre-built uh, and that we're going to be modifying was a lot safer than in a real-time environment when $13 billion worth of property tax revenue has to be collected and distributed. It was just a safer way to do it. Um, could we have built something different from scratch? Maybe, but with Agile, and the sprints and the, and the scrums that we had, we pretty comfortable. Another thing to mention, and I, and I think it's responsive to what you're saying, I hope it is, is um, when you've got different offices that have to work together to get it done, so the assessor assesses, the board of review hears the appeals, the, the clerk's office in Cook County takes all the taxing rates, and then the treasurer's office takes the values from all of us, the rates, and sends out the bill. Somebody has to be the leader and start the process, so, Whoever it is has to do it, but they also have to have buy-in from the other participants. So as soon as we went with OnBase and the Bureau of Technology worked with us, we invited the assessor, the treasurer, the clerk's office to send somebody down to spend the time to sit in on these meetings and to learn what we were using. We're not committing them to using our platform and, and using our system in the future, but they have to understand our process so that when they build their own, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, uh, they won't be starting from scratch. They can avoid our mistakes. And to your point, maybe they can be a little bit more adventurous uh, and risk-taking uh, and bolder than, um, than we were. There's all sorts of stuff that in the first yeah. meeting uh, that the commissioners had uh, with BOT that I wanted to be uh, in the RFP that they politely said, that's not something we're going to put in. Um, and I'm like, I get it. Um, you know, that's stuff we can build toward later on. I, I would love to, for example, have a WebEx for hearings virtually so you don't have to come to the board for your hearing. We could do this virtually. Um, I was told, that's awesome. Why don't we build this first and we'll maybe get to that. Um, I get that. Well, we're well, we're going we're to get there. Uh, we're, it's just not going to be on day one. Uh, the, the only thing I got to add is that, is that because we picked a platform, because we, we picked a very popular software platform, it, it allowed it to be scalable. And that was really what we were looking for. There, there have been some changes within, within OnBase and just within, within the work environment where there's, there's a lot more collaboration. And, and as we update OnBase, it will start to give us the opportunity to kind of reach a little bit. But we had to, just, in, in the, just using the agile methodology too, I mean, the first thing you do is you really, you decide what you can live with. And you start there, and then you start to then you start to make priorities of what what works for you and your business, and what you can live without. And then you start to phase and phase and phase. So does that does that help? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.